Because most of us live very far away from the natural world, it can be quite easy to forget how brutal it can be. Many of the world's animals struggle to survive, and predators have to fight for every meal that they get. In some cases, some animals get so desperate that they look to their own kind for food. And even though this is common in the fish and insect world, it also happens with other types of animals. In this video, I'll be going through just a few of these examples, as I'll be going through five animal cannibals. And for our first species, we'll be heading into the Arctic Circle, as we have the polar bear. Now, polar bears are the largest land carnivores on this planet, but they are actually classed as marine mammals. This is because they spend most of their lives on sea ice, which is technically the ocean. Although they're not as agile in the water as other marine mammals, polar bears are surprisingly good swimmers. They can reach speeds of up to 6 miles per hour, and in some rare cases, they can swim for days at a time. Polar bears are very impressive predators, and can take down surprisingly large prey. They primarily target seals, but can even take down prey as large as walruses and small beluga whales. Polar bears are one of the few creatures that see us directly as a food source, and you definitely wouldn't want to meet one in the wild. Every time I bring up polar bears in a video, a small number of people comment the same thing. I've always stated in my videos that polar bears are listed as vulnerable, and if we don't change our ways, the polar bears' numbers will suffer. But under my previous videos, I've got comments saying that polar bear numbers are increasing, and that they have a very healthy population in the wild. There is some truth in these comments, but it's not as simple as you might think. Historically, polar bear numbers have been very similar to what they are today, with the current population being around 26,000. These 26,000 bears are divided into 19 subpopulations, and although two of these populations are increasing, four are in decline. Because of the changes we are making to this planet, their main hunting grounds are disappearing, and global polar bear numbers are projected to decline by 30% by 2050. The melting of sea ice isn't just bad for these bears, but it is also bad for us humans. Human polar bear conflicts have increased over recent years, and this most often occurs in the summer. This is when and hungry polar bears are desperately searching for food, and this search leads them to humans. Unfortunately for the polar bears, less than 2% of their hunts are successful. Luckily, when they do catch their prey, there's a lot of food to go around, but this success rate means they go a long time without food. This has led to many polar bears getting desperate, and they've even started hunting each other. For a long time, it's been known that some polar bears will cannibalize each other, but this used to be a very rare occurrence. Unfortunately, this behavior is becoming more common, and males are usually the main culprits. Because males are a lot larger than females. They usually tend to target females with cubs, and although females will fiercely defend their cubs, sometimes this is simply not enough. So even though this behavior seems very brutal, it's only because these bears are very desperate. But for our next species, we'll be heading into the subtropical and temperate waters worldwide, as we have the sand tiger shark. Now these sharks aren't the prettiest of fish, and this isn't helped by their large overhanging teeth. Although this may make them look frightening, they are one of the calmer, more docile sharks. Attacks on humans are extremely rare, with only 36 unprovoked attacks on record. None of these attacks proved fatal, and in most cases they only approach humans to steal fish from them. Unlike many other sharks that have to keep moving to survive, you may have noticed that these sharks are very lethargic and may even seem lazy. This behavior has actually made them well suited for aquariums, and in some rare cases they've even been bred in captivity. Rather surprisingly, it's not adult sand tiger sharks I will be focusing on, because it's actually their young that are cannibals. These sharks have a very long gestation period, and females host around five to seven developing embryos. Unfortunately for these embryos, the majority of them will not make it to maturity, and usually only two survive. When one of these young sharks hatches, they start to devour their other unhatched eggs, and even their smaller and weaker siblings. This means that when their mother finally gives birth, only two shark pups remain, and this is one pup for each uterus. So in the whole of the animal kingdom, this must be one of the most ruthless ways to start your life. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Southern Africa, as we have the Cape Cobra. Now when one of my most recent videos, I went through some of the most deadly snakes on this planet. Two of these snakes can be found in Africa, and they are both the Black Mamba and the Puff Adder. This snake is another species that was close to being on that list, as it's both very aggressive and has very potent venom. Its venom attacks your respiratory system, your nervous system, and your heart, and in some severe cases, you can be dead within 10 hours of a bite. But if you were to look out for this snake in the wild, it can be very hard to identify. Although they are most famous for their dazzling yellow color, they can also be a dull brown or a speckledy mixture between the two. Although there are deadlier snakes in Africa, these snakes may fear the Cape Cobra. It's not rare for cobras 
cobras to eat other snakes, but the cape cobra does it quite a lot. To be able to take down other dangerous snakes, the cape cobra does have some immunity to other snake venoms, but these cobras aren't the only creatures with venom immunity, because famously one of their natural enemies is the mongoose, and these mongoose along with meerkats have some immunity to the cape cobra's venom. This means that they can be quite difficult prey to go after, and might be the reason why they choose to hunt so many snakes. 31% of the cape cobra's diet is made up of rodents, a massive 20% were other snakes, 11% were both birds and lizards, 16% was carrion, and surprisingly 11% of their diet was made up of their own species. This means that over 1 in 10 meals for the cape cobra is another cape cobra, and just goes to show how willing they are to hunt their own kind. So even though it's not the deadliest snake in Africa, it is one of the most interesting. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to South America, as we have the dying poison dart frog. Now just like the cape cobra, this small frog can come in many different forms. It can be anything from a blue, yellow, yellow and black colour, to a blue and black colour, to a solely yellow and black colour. Its striking patterns are a form of aposomatic coloration, which tries to warn would-be predators that they are dangerous. This of course is seen in many other species, but is most famously seen in dart frogs. As I said, this species is relatively small, reaching a maximum size of around 5 centimetres. Despite their size, they are relatively safe, because as their common name suggests, they are very toxic. Despite this, dart frogs are very popular in the pet trade, and in many cases, these pet frogs are very safe to handle and are not very toxic at all. That's because these frogs get their toxins from the food that they eat, which is usually small insects. They absorb the toxins from these prey animals and then become toxic themselves. But just like the sand tiger sharks, it's not the adults I'll be focusing on in this video, but is instead their cannibalistic young. Now this species cares for its young up to a point, as males will often carry tadpoles on their back. This is until they find a suitable pool of water and then they quickly drop them off. This is of course very caring behaviour, but it does get a little strange. This is because the male will often deposit young tadpoles into a pool with much larger tadpoles. These smaller tadpoles soon fall prey to the larger tadpoles, which makes the father look like a very bad parent. Strangely, there might be some reasoning behind this behaviour, because scientists have suggested that the males do this because they know that the water source is safe. If a water source already has a living tadpole in it, it means that it has suitable conditions for survival and therefore is a good place to drop off a tadpole. So even though it may seem like a good idea, it does lead to many tadpoles getting eaten by other tadpoles. But for our next species, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have ferrets. Now in this video, I will be talking about domesticated ferrets, but I could also choose other members of its family. Historically, ferrets have been very useful creatures to have around, because they're very effective at hunting rabbits. This is of course behaviour that they would exhibit in the wild. Wild, because the ferret is thought to be a domesticated form of the European polecat. Although ferrets are known for being very intelligent and fun-loving in captivity, in the wild they are very efficient hunters. Now to be included on this list, we now know that ferrets must target their own kind in some way. Surprisingly, adults don't target other adults, but instead sometimes mothers target their own young. This is a problem that many ferret keepers run into, and when a Jill has given birth, it's a good idea to leave them alone for a few weeks. This is because if the female ferret feels threatened, in some cases, they will eat their own young, either because they think they will get eaten anyway, or because they simply don't have enough milk to raise them. And even though this may seem like a very evil thing to do, it just goes to show how ruthless life can really be. Surprisingly, there are many other species that could have made it on this list, but if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>